Hello, and welcome to One Voice Live, where we talk about one voice, what it is, and how it fits into the world of singing. I'm your host, Alex Zito, and I'm joined today by certified One Voice coach, Michael Marchese. Michael, hello! And we're back. Woo! I love it. We are continuing our vocal translating series, which is where we take potentially confusing words or phrases from the conventional world of singing, and we translate them into our One Voice language to better understand what they mean and how to use it. Um, so today we're talking about what is falsetto? So a brief history of falsetto. Uh, this word has been a thing since as early as the 16th century and we still use it today. However, there's never really been a consensus as far as what it is. People still argue that males have falsettos, females don't. Some people say females do. Other people say it's all just head voice and everyone has it. Um, and as far as where it lives in your range, there's no consensus there either, which we'll get into more why that is later. A common definition is a type of vocal phonation that enables a singer to sing notes beyond the vocal range of the normal voice. So basically, you have your normal voice, and then once that is limited, you can't anymore, you then access your falsetto higher up for however many more notes there is. The, there's a lot of confusion with the head voice thing, like you said. I know like back in the 1700s, I think that it was once translated to literally head voice. Most choirs were all male at the beginning. Um, but I do know that they've kind of proven since then that women have the equivalent of falsetto. Like they can do the same phone nation type as men do. It just wasn't noticed until much more recently. And as far as your experience before One Voice, can you talk a little bit about that? For performance purposes, like what you'll see like in a performance, it'll almost always be directed to men. Almost always. I, in mm -hmm. fact, I'm not, I say almost because I've, I can't guarantee, but I've never ever heard someone like turn to a woman and be like, hey, sing in your falsetto, mm -hmm. right? Um, now they'll, they will say sing in your head voice. So if they're the same thing, then you could say that. But for, for me, the music director who was auditioning us was like, all right, so I don't want you to sing this in full voice. I want you to flip up into your falsetto, right? So you'll hear that sometimes like in auditions, if they want you to get that kind of breathy, airy, quieter sound. Mm -hmm. um, and was like, that ever confusing for you? Or was it just like, oh, cool, my falsetto, great. Oh, yeah, well, it's, so it depends. Because the reason it's confusing is because depending on who you're talking to, falsetto doesn't mean the same thing. Almost always it has to do with higher pitches, right? I was asked to play a woman. Uh, and they have a singing part and the, the music director said, I would, I want you to sing in your falsetto like the woman is singing in her chest voice. Wait, what, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, I had no, I had no idea what to do. I, I think I literally just tried to increase volume and at a higher range, like in that sort of breathy falsetto-y sort of, um, space because I, I was already singing in what was deemed as falsetto right. what he was he was trying to give me a direction about how i was using my falsetto if we're talking about how you might see falsetto mm -hmm. like or where you'd see it in the wild i guess yes, um, exactly. um, <laughs> <laughs> there it is we're hunting a wild falsetto um so uh gosh i can't remember his name but uh uh he's a great singer he's he's got um uh, uh i can be violent like sky i can be purple Mika. Mika. There you go. Yeah. So he, he uses like what a lot of people would call falsetto or like a really powerful falsetto all the time. Mm -hmm. And then another really prominent singer is, um, a uh, lead singer of Coldplay. Um, totally. Chris Martin. Uh, but yeah, so the lead singer of Coldplay, of course, he flips into falsetto, um, stylistically as well, uh, all the time. Um, Same with, uh, Maroon 5. Yes, yes. So, see, so what's funny is that I would say, like, the way normal people reference falsetto, he sings in falsetto almost all the time. Wow. Almost always in falsetto. Uh, but there are some people who would say he's not singing falsetto. That's why it's confusing, because yeah. um, it's just not quite clear, like, when falsetto ends and when your, like, normal voice begins. So, um but honestly, for me, it's just like, you know, Maroon 5, 
uh, Adam Levine, he just has built up a lot of strength in that quality of voice in the way that the muscles are kind of are. And so his is, sounds cleaner, or pure, or such and such. And he's articulating them in a way that uh, gives you that quality. And he's used to sitting there. So it just seems like, oh my gosh, it's so powerful. But really, it's just built up the strength there. In my opinion, I, I think so. That's what I feel. Yeah, I would totally agree. So let's dig into what it means in our world so we can stop dancing around it. Uh, what does falsetto mean in our world? Uh, so after you know talking with you and other coaches and researching it, it in my opinion, it, it clearly is referencing a lightweight. Yeah, I, I literally think that it means just entirely referencing the weight scale and the lighter range of the weight scale. What I will also say, though, is that when people talk about falsetto, they're saying lightweight, but they're talking about lightweight usually at higher pitches for men in general, right? Yep. And uh, that's where, for some people, they consider head voice and falsetto to be the same. So that's where it's like the female head voice and falsetto are like basically the same in terms of how they're referenced, right? So that's, that's how you know women have falsetto as well, falsetto. Uh, it's basically the male head voice, right? Um, though we did have an example that you were mentioning that someone said head voice is what we would say is uh, higher pitches with a mid or a heavy weight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, that's why it, it's not clear what people are referring to. That, that's why it's confusing, I guess. Um, yeah, and I think the real reason it's confusing is because, again, just like mixing or belting or uh, deep or pingy, like all of these things, again, they're describing sound. And falsetto is this idea of a sound, but no one has a consensus on how we're achieving it or what, what exact sound we're going for. So right. anything from like a light to a mid weight in a higher note, I think, is considered by some a falsetto and then other people it's like only a lightweight. Right. Um, yeah, but this video I saw, it was a teacher on YouTube and he was doing examples of his own falsetto to head voice. And it was so interesting because he showed a video of, um, I, I didn't know if it was him or someone else getting strobed, but you could literally see the changes in intensity. It was the same note, so it would be like, Wee! and then it would go, Wee! and you would see it just go to a lighter weight. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, I did want to take a moment because I realized that we were talking about weight. And for people that are watching that have no idea what weight is, we should, we should, we should take a second. So um, yeah, so when we're referencing weight, what we're talking about is vocal cord intensity, big words. So basically, your vocal cords are sitting in your trachea, right in your larynx. And so they're basically just these two folds that kind of, you know, We'll do this. They kind of open and close like this. So when we're talking in, say, a heavier weight, which I'm kind of talking in a heavy weight right now, what you're doing is the muscles around, they have like very weird names, but the muscles around the vocal cords, you're actually engaging them and pressing the vocal cords together so that when you talk, the folds are kind of beating together, right? It sounds violent, but it, it's really not. Um, so when you're singing in what a lot of people would call in classical the, uh, singing chest voice, or you're speaking like I am now, then that's going to be a heavy weight, right? And they're just kind of slapping together. So there's no space between the chords. And you can increase the intensity by pressing them together more and more, right? So if you did it like all the way, it would, it would be like something like this, right? Where I'm just like really pressed together right now. Um, so I'm talking about like a heavier middleweight. On the other side of the spectrum, when we're talking about lightweight, like I said, with heavy, you're pressing them together. So as you get lighter, you're actually relaxing the muscles and allowing the cords to kind of break, right? So if I've got my two folds right here, so instead of pressing them really hard together, I'm kind of allowing them to relax a little bit. And so what you get is this, like, namaste, namaste <laughs> class, welcome to yoga, right? And so you can really hear the breath, the breathiness quality, right, the extra air. And I can keep going until I'm almost whispering, right? But see, you can still hear that there's that tone of my vocal cords. So basically, when we're referring to weight, we're talking about how much you're, pre you're using the muscles to press the vocal cords together and allowing the air to pass through 
uh, your vocal cords, basically. Um, yeah, or not pass through. Or, or don't pass through. So yeah. did I cover that kind of okay? Nailed it. Yes. Big old check. Um, <laughs> great. So circling back again, now that we have a really clear, solid definition of what weight is, falsetto is normally a lighter weight in higher ranges. For some people, it's also leaning towards a midweight. That depends person to person because, again, there's no consensus. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so any more um, reasons, Marchese, why we avoid the word falsetto? Anything more you want to dig into there? Um, I also don't like I also don't like the term falsetto because uh, I I could be wrong, but I, I literally think it means like false voice or like false something. Yeah. And, and the implication there is that it's like you it's like you're using a different tissue, which is not true. Like, mm -hmm. thing is, it's like this implication that I've like, now I've got my falsetto larynx. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's the one thing. I just don't like that. Um, I don't really care for head voice all that much either, but it's much, it, to me, that's, I would much prefer everyone use head voice than falsetto. Cause I think falsetto is kind of a, a ridiculous term in that sense. Yeah. Well, the other thing is falsetto inherently divides, at least in the beginning, it was meant to divide male versus female singers. Yes, right. Um, and so much of that is just because of gender norms. What's required of male singers has always been a beefier, heavier weight uh, for a longer, uh, more extended range. Whereas females were most often, especially way back when, allowed to flip into more of a lighter weight or a mid weight. Um, so the fact that falsetto even existed was just because men weren't expected to make a female-like sound. Um, right. right. Like when, when in reality, sorry. Yeah, like a count, like countertenor. Exactly. Right. Um, when in reality, other than the coordination changes being on different notes, it's all the same stuff. Like we all can hit the same note ranges and we all can create different weights within that for different styles and different sounds. Um, so that's the other reason I don't love falsetto. Yeah, no. So the, literally the only difference is basically the, the size, the apparatus is basically the same. Yep. Um, so it would basically be saying that if you, let's say had a clarinet that had like a one inch reed and you had a clarinet that had a one and a fourth of an inch reed that the instruments behave entirely differently or there's some sort of like, oh, the, the, the smaller reed can't, can't do something that the larger reed can do. And it's like, well, I mean, it'll naturally sink in a lower pitch where it, it like, if you do the same thing, the larger reed will be the lower pitch. But other than that, they're the same apparatus. It's just the size. And um, from everything that I've seen, male and female vocal cords are exactly the same other than the size of the chords. Yep. Totally. Agreed. No. Um, I had another quote that I found really interesting. Oh, this is another thing that just like drove it home for me. Uh, I did so much research today on like vocal pedagogy and falsetto and what people believe. And yes. one of the quotes was, some people feel a sense of muscular relief when they flip into falsetto. So this just totally drives home that if our heavyweight is a high vocal cord intensity pushing the other really hard, if you flip into a lighter weight, you're going to feel relief there. Yeah, yeah. And even, I think I, I read some vocal pedagogy stuff. So they're talking about, so your, uh, your vocal cords are attached to muscles. And they're literally talking about when, when you're in modal voice or normal voice, your, those muscles are engaged, basically. And that when you release into lightweight, those muscles release. Hmm. Just like there with lightweight. Is. Yeah. And so they relax. And so it allows there to be a larger gap in the middle sometimes. And they that basically what they say, this is what's great. They say that more trained counter tenors won't have a gap. So what that means to what that means in one voice is that uh, basically they're just not extra light. So if you have like a light to heavy scale, right, this being super light, this being super heavy, they're basically saying that a trained counter tenor would sing lightweight here. And mm -hmm. then this is how normal people sing lightweight because they're not used to like playing in the middle between heavy and light. But it's like vocal pedagogy is almost directly in line with uh, one voice's definition of weight. Um, 
when it comes to falsetto. The only difference, the only difference is that vocal pedagogy says that uh, that the falsetto is higher. So they, I, they, they basically say like the range is like an octave or some, I think it's an octave higher basically. Um, which impl implies that you can't make a lightweight down in like your chest voice, which is actually totally not true at all. Um, yeah. There's also so. not a consensus about that though, because the video I watched where um, the guy was going between his head voice and his falsetto, AKA lightweight yeah. and a heavier lightweight. Um, <laughs> he, he kept sliding down almost, I want to say to chest coordination, holding on to a lightweight. So he was saying, you can take your falsetto really, really low. Ooh. And was like using that. So even that, people are uh, not really in agreement. Right, right. Yeah. But then when you just think about it as literally how much pressure you're putting on your vocal cords, then it makes sense because you can do that at any pitch. Exactly, yeah. Just saying. And I think that's what it all comes down to is notes and weights so it's like get in the coordination pick the weight that you want and that's you can take all the voices chest voice head voice falsetto um and it can be grouped it can be identified in that way um what coordination right. what weight are you singing in right and right one voice world. yeah the don't do sadness um flippy can we hear you do that in a heavy weight and then flip into what would be considered a falsetto. Oh yeah, so you just, <clears throat> so basically like, if I was doing it in a heavy weight, it would be like, I don't do sadness, not even a little bit. Right. Awesome. And then someone but, says, do that in a falsetto. Yeah, and then if I did it how it's on the track, it's don't do sadness, not even a little bit. Right. That was not a good example of it, but that's basically what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that was great. You flipped into a lighter weight. Um, so because there's no consensus on what weight falsetto really is, what are some trigger words that people can listen for when someone, a director or a teacher is saying, I want you to sing in your falsetto. How do they know kind of what weight to go for? You'll get like intimate. Well, because it's like, when you wish upon a star. Right. So they're like basically saying uh, more intimate, more, because like if you're, if you're like singing with someone, they'll be like, don't scream in their face. Make, make it like more, like a more intimate moment. Right. Um, quieter. Right. A lot of the times. So, so here's the thing. So you can be quiet in a heavy weight, but a lot of times when they say quieter, They'll all, they'll all want it to be lightweight as well. They'll want it to be falsetto. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also um, breathier or um, it's not prettier. There's like a specific word that's like on the tip of my tongue. Floaty? I have heard that. That's not the one I'm thinking of. But they're, they're basically, it's kind of like analogous to saying like pretty or like smooth. It's usually quiet, breathy, airy, floated up there floated up there, like you said, mm -hmm. um, those sorts of words that have kind of a ease or like soothing connotation, right? Yes. That's, that's kind of the words you're looking for, because they'll use whatever word comes to their head. Um, yeah. And I think if you're confused, some clarifying questions, um, I would recommend mostly clarifying weight and volume without using those words necessarily. So you can say, would you like it airier? Like, would you like it breathier? Do you want it to be a stronger sound? Would you like it louder or quieter? I think those are some really simple ways to kind of bridge the gap between the two worlds. And then continue to listen for other trigger words like Marchese just listed. Um, right. Yeah. Anything else there? Oh, yes. And uh, I think we kind of touched on this before, but if they say head voice, they, they all, like 99 out of 100 are talking about falsetto. Like the, what we're describing as falsetto head voice means that in my experience 99 percent of the time every once in a while you'll get someone that head voice is basically like a mid-weight hmm. in yeah. in like uh, higher pitches but nine times out of ten um head voice and falsetto are the same
Yeah, so my last question for you is, let's go back to that spring awakening direction you got. Yeah. Um, sing in your falsetto like a woman would sing in her chest voice. Now knowing what we know, what do you think they were trying to get you to do? I was not in one voice land at this time. So of course I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had to interpret that, and I wish they were here, like I wish I could talk to them and be like, so was this what you meant? Yeah. But what I think that they wanted me to do was they wanted me to sing in what one voice calls a uh, male's head coordination, which is basically uh, the A after middle C, right? From that A and an octave up, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what one voice calls the head coordination for men. And they wanted me to sing A, B flat, C, wherever that was, uh, uh, tenor high C, in a lightweight, or uh, in, a, in, a, in that sort of lightweight area, but they wanted me to increase the weight towards middle, right? So they didn't want me to belt it. They wanted me to go like, instead of like, uh, sadness, they wanted me like, sadness, not even a little bit, or maybe even more. But mm -hmm. they basically wanted me to increase the weight, but not belt, right? Cool. Um, and it probably increase volume as well. But if I had to guess, it was mostly about wanting an increase in weight. Yeah, I totally agree. Because chest voice for so many people in the uh, conventional world of singing means a heavier weight in general. Because if you think head right. voice, a lot of times we get lighter. Um, that's so great. I love that so It's such much. a great direction. <laughs> it's so good. Honestly, I think it is. I, I, I'm sure you were really frustrated in the moment, but I think it is such a smart way to use a limited language. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you think of like, okay, there's only two types of singing, there's falsetto and then there's uh, like modal voice or normal voice or chest voice or whatever, then, uh, then it's like, okay, well, how can I bridge the gap between those two things? I mean, it's a great shot at it. It's definitely, not a bad direction if you think of I only have falsetto and chest voice or head voice yeah. and chest voice. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, I just love it now because I'm just like, wow, I had no idea what that, what that meant. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, okay, great. Uh, any last thoughts on falsetto? Any other thoughts? I don't think so. We, we talked a lot about it. Um, it's such a, like a whimsical little word. <laughs> um, from like time, times long ago. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like trying to figure out like when people were uh, writing the constitution, like what they were thinking about. This is like what we're doing right now. We're like, what were like, they What did you really mean? <laughs> yeah, and what would you mean if you had information today? Would you still call it falsetto? Like, you know? Right, right. That's so funny. Okay, great. This was awesome. Marchese, thank you so much for digging into falsetto with me. This was totally fascinating. I had really no history with it. Is it? Would you ever call it whistle? Interesting. Would you ever call falsetto whistle? Yes. Um, okay, yes. Okay, so uh, this is great because in one voice we have whistle coordination. So it's not that. So if, if you've got male head voice, I do male. So we break on all A's, right? Coordination ships on A's. So tenor high C is in head, head coordination, right? Not head voice, not falsetto, head coordination. If you go up to the next A, the A above tenor high C, that starts what's called, that's the gap, that's the break, I guess, between male head coordination and male whistle coordination. So if you've ever heard Mariah Carey go like, ah, and she's like up there doing that craziness, she's in her whistle coordination, um, which has to do with just pitch range. Now, I don't know if I've heard that, like I've heard that like she's whistling, but I've never heard whistle be analogous to like a male falsetto or a male head voice. Now, what I would say though, is that because female head voice is much higher than like, I think female uh, head voice is like around male whistle. It's about the same there. And so, um, and so if, they're now just recently, like in the last 30 years or so, they've basically been like, oh, women have falsetto too. So if you're thinking of it in the same terms as male falsetto, right? Higher pitch beyond what you sing in normal voice, right? Then what they could be saying is 
whistle to uh, a woman, meaning basically the equivalent of just, oh, I want you to sing in a higher pitch above your normal voice range for women, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think of head vo male head voice and female head voice are the same thing, right? And that some people call male head voice falsetto. Some people might call female head voice whistle because it, it starts whistling. When you start getting up in those high pitches, just the quality of the tone changes to our ears. Like it starts to get more whistly sounding. Um, so I could definitely see that. I've never heard that, but I could definitely see that happening. Um, yeah, I think it's just, just a similar uh, confusion because again, it's based on a sound, but right. I've definitely been singing higher up in my head coordination at a really, really quiet volume. And people think it's whistle because yes. it's that tiny, like, like thing going on, but I'm still definitely in head coordination. Um, so based on our definition, one voice, not whistle until that F or for males that A. Um, right, right, right. Great question though. Excellent. Yeah, that's that. fascinating. That's, uh, that is fascinating. Cause I, I can totally see where that would happen. Like I can see it. I'm like, oh, I totally get it. They think they are saying that whistle is female falsetto. Yeah, got you. Thanks, bros. Thanks, bro. Love <laughs> I love that question. I do. I really do love that question because now I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, I can so see that. Yeah, I just want to take a hot second because you said that, like, just to brag on our community, one voicers are truly the coolest. And it just makes me so happy. Like questions like that, that your brain would even go there. It's so cool to me. So thank you. Keep sending in your questions. It's part of why we love them so much. Oh, so nerdy and amazing. Okay, cool. Um, I feel clear. I now know everything about falsetto. I'm happy. <laughs> I feel clear. I feel transparent. Yes, it's great. It feels freeing. You guys, please submit your questions to questions.singonevoice.com or uh, directly in our DMs on Instagram. And we would love to answer those for you in our question segment of the show. Next week, I am joined by Michael Maresca, creator of One Voice, for another vocal translating. And we're going to be talking about what full voice means. What does it mean? Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> same time, same place, Wednesday, uh, 6.30 p.m. CT, 7.30 p.m. ET. And we will see you guys there. Michael Marchese, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Yeah, it's so fun. Thank you all so much for watching One Voice Live. <laughs>